Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site-wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. In today's game, Kevin, Mika, and Maximus once more find themselves trapped in my basement and having to play a game of magic to get out. Max is trying to go for the win so he can breathe some sweet fresh air with Rakdos, Lord of Riots, keeping a Swamp, Rakdos Killgate, Command Tower, Thriving Bluff, Ulamog's Crusher, Tainted Strike, and Protection Racket. Mika is rocking his Rith the Awakener deck, keeping a Wood Foothills, Fortified Village, Vivian Reed, Elf's Best Son's Champion, Path to Exile, Exotic Orchard, and a Fabro Elder. Kevin is praying to his god for a win, playing Clothis, God of Destiny, to hopefully win some favor, keeping a Forest, Ash Barons, Mountain, Kenris Transformation, Dictate of the Twin Gods, Vandal Blast, and Escape to the Wilds. Much like Jigsaw, I just want to have fun, and I've brought Utrimi the Ever Playful to help capture that spirit. I keep Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, Watery Grave, Trumpety Nar, Woodland Cemetery, Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth, Cavern Harpy, and a Reflecting Pool. Maximus wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws and plays a tap Rakdos Guildgate. Mika plays a Wooded Foothills and passes. Kevin's got a Mountain for turn, passing after that. I draw and play a tapped Watery Grave. Maximus plays a Swamp and pays 2 for Rakto Signet. On his end step, Mika cracks the Wooded Foothills for a Temple Garden, while Kevin basic land cycles his Ash Barons to go and find a Mountain. Mika draws and plays a Game Trail, then ships the turn after that. Kevin just plays a Forest. I've got a Woodland Cemetery coming into play, and I'm able to cast a Baleful Strix and draw a card. I pass after that. Max plays a Dross Forge Bridge which comes in tapped, and then pays 3 mana for Protection Racket, passing. Mika plays a Fortified Village and reveals a Force so it comes in untapped. He pays 3 for a Fabro Elder, and then passes. During his end step, Kevin casts a Targa's Command to put a Mountain into play and deals 3 to each of his opponents. Kevin draws, playing a tap Temple of Abandon and scrying one to the bottom. He then plays Clothis and passes. I draw, playing out Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth. I then pay enough to cast Gwenna, Eyes of Gaia, and pass to Max. Maximus reveals a Swamp to Mika for Protection Racket, a Knot of This World to Kevin, and another Swamp to me. We all decide to pay life to exile them, with Kevin taking 7, and Maximus then draws. He then plays a Thriving Bluff as a tapped dual land, and he's able to cast Rakdos with an opponent having taken damage. He passes after that. Mika's got a Plains for turn, and goes to combat. He gets first blood by poking Kevin for 2 with the Faber Welder, and after that, casts Defense of the Heart. Kevin exiles Mika's Wooded Foothills as it's the only target for Clothis, and draws. He uses the mana from his god to help cast Escape from the Wilds, exiling his top 5. He plays two forests from it, and is also able to cast the Sylvan Library. He passes after that. I draw, and play a Reflecting Pool. I then cast a Beast Whisperer, before playing out Baby Godzilla, aka Polywalk Symbiote, drawing a card from the Whisperer. I pass after that. Max exiles Pharesis, then Swiftfoot Boots, and a Void Winnower. Kevin and Mika pay 2 life, while I pay 9 to deny all of those extra cards, and Max gets to draw. He then goes to combat, and swings Rakdos at Mika, who responds in kind with a Path to Exile. Maximus' commander goes to the command zone, while he goes to find a land. 
In his second main phase, he plays out a command tower and then recasts Rakdos. He's then able to cast an Ulamog's Crusher for almost nothing, and then an Ancient Stone Idol, and then a Pathraiser of Ulamog for free. With nothing else, he passes turn. Miga's defense of the Heart Triggers and gets a Perforos, God of the Forge, and Norelia the Warleader, putting them into play, which has Perforos dealing two to us. He then draws and plays a Force for turn. Going to combat, he swings Aurelia and the Faber Elder at Kevin, and then does it again. After combat, Mika then casts a Darksteel Ingot and plays an Elspeth Sun's Champion. He down takes her to wipe away all of Maximus' massive creatures and passes after that. Kevin draws off the Sylvan Library but decides to lose no life to keep any extras. He plays a Forest for turn and then casts Enchantress's Presence. He then casts Kenrith's Transformation, enchanting it onto Aurelia, drawing from it and the Presence. He then enchants a land with a fertile ground and draws again from the Presence. He leaves his other two cards from Escape to the Wilds in Exile and passes. I draw and mutate Otrimi onto Gwenna. I draw from the Beast Whisperer and get a loot from the Polywog, discarding a Crystal Shard. We then realize we forgot the closest trigger on Kevin's turn, and he chooses to exile a creature from Max's graveyard and drains us for two. I then play a Forest for turn and cast a Beast Caller Savant. I then go to combat and swing my Baleful Strix at Elspeth and Utrimi at Max, whose Stone Idol token I forgot about unfortunately. Maximus and I bounce creatures off of each other while Elspeth dies. In my post-combat main phase, I cast a Cavern Harpy and draw a card and pass. Max reveals a Hagra Mauling, Emrakul the Promised End, and a Mountain to the Protection Racket triggers. I pay zero for the Mountain, while Mika and Kevin give him the other cards. Maximus then draws for turn, playing out his Hagra Mauling as a land, and follows up with a Nettle Drone. He passes after that. Mika draws, playing out an exotic orchard in his main phase. He casts an aura shard before going to combat. He pokes Kevin again for three with the Faber or Elder, and then in his second main phase, casts his commander, Rith. With the dragon coming in, it deals two to all of us, and he has the aura shard trigger to destroy the Kenner's transformation. With nothing else, he passes. Kevin draws and uses his library but keeps no extra cards. He then plays a Blasphemous Act to help wipe away the board, and following that, he casts a Burning Earth and Spell Shock to really put the squeeze on the table. He passes after that. I draw and play a Flooded Grove. I then take three to cast Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, down taking her to put a card into exile and pass. Maximus reveals a Homeward Path, Bloodfell Caves, and a Heb the Eternal from the Protection Racket trigger. Kevin Mika deny him the lands, while I give him Neheb before he draws. He then draws for turn, and plays out Neheb in his main phase, taking two from Burning Earth. With nothing else, he passes. Mika draws and plays Tristani. We all take two as it comes in, and Aura Shard destroys the Protection Racket. With nothing else, he passes. Kevin draws and doesn't keep any extra cards from the Sylvan Library. He then exiles Aurelia from Mika's graveyard to drain us for two with Clothis. He then plays out his own Neheb the Eternal and moves through combat to his second main phase. Kevin gets six red mana from the Heb trigger and uses it to help cast Dictate of the Twin Gods. In response, I flash in a trumpeting Gnar and Kevin passes turn. I draw and play a Sunken Hollow. I then uptick Vivian targeting the Gnar, and pass. Maximus draws and plays a Mountain. He goes to combat, swinging the Heb at Mika. Since Tristani will die because of the Dictate, he opts for no blocks and instead takes 8. After combat, this has Maximus gaining 8 red mana from Neheb, and uses it to help cast Rakdos, and once Rakdos is out, cast Kozilek Butcher of Truth, which draws him 4 cards on cast. 
He then also plays out Emrakul, choosing Mika since he'll die to the Clothis triggers anyway, hoping Mika has an out for Kevin. Maximus passes to himself and takes Mika's turn. Mika draws and Maximus is in control, making him take 8 by tapping his lands and then cast Vivian Reed. Vivian then down ticks on Dictate, which saves Max from dying to Kevin at least. Going to combat, Maximus swings Tristani at himself, which he eats with the Emrakul. He then passes turn, and Mika goes to his regular turn. Mika draws and upticks Vivian, revealing an Esper Sentinel. He then plays out Tristani Discordant, which deals 6 to everyone and takes Max out. The Orishard takes out Spellshock, Burning Earth, and Enchantress's Presence. Mika then follows up with an Esper Sentinel, which as it comes in, kills Kevin thanks to Perforos. He then passes to me. I draw and play Command Tower. I down tick Vivian again, but don't find anything to help me. I follow up with the Shared Summons to hopefully find an out, but I can't find anything that'll save me, and I scoop it up to Mika. Game review time. So once more I found myself struggling with not having enough mutate cards in my Otrimi deck. I think I really need to consider either running a lot more draw, or kind of break my decision of not running tutors, and put some better ones into it, like Demonic and Vampiric. I just need something to help get the ball rolling, and just relying on luck unfortunately does not seem to be doing it. Kevin's Clothis deck is just painful, painful Enchantress. He runs so many damaging effects, and has so many ways of making those damaging effects, his deck seems innocuous enough as it is, but will quickly get out of control. This is the second time that Mika's played his Rift deck, and considering it's an Elder Dragon, I'm pretty impressed with how well it does. A token deck doesn't hurt when it has Perforos out, and I think a lot of us were digging for answers for it, but we just couldn't deal with the enchantment. I think Maximus was the best suited to deal with Mika, which would have been through player removal, and considering he even took one of Mika's turn, I'm surprised he wasn't in a better position. I think all the added damage from Kevin early on, not to mention the fact that as soon as you start casting multiple Eldrazi's, you tend to paint a big target on your back. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.